I want to talk to you about faith, and the, the uh, first scripture I want to read to you is in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. When God showed me what he did about this verse many years ago, it really, really changed me. It changed me about faith. It changed me about uh, being able to believe. And it helped my faith when he showed me what he did about this verse. In, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is. Now, a lot of people, I won't, a lot of ministers, a lot of ministers won't believe what I say, and I don't believe a lot of what they say. Yeah. Because when I see them differ from the word, I, I, it's something like happens here, turns off in here. And I've been in services where I'd be listening to a preacher preach, and and I hear him say some contrary to the word of God, but that immediately turned me, turned my my little volume down here, and I don't want to hear too much after that. But I say, Lord, if you got me here, let me get what I'm supposed to get. Praise God. But a lot might not agree with this, but as long as I have the scriptures to back me up, I don't really care what people think. Because when I say it before God, I don't want him to say, Well, I need you believe if you do, I said it. Why did you let what people think and what other people said it the way it's a certain way or that, that way or this way? Why did you let that affect you? Why did you just accept what my word said? So back in the 70s, he told me, I want you to do something. I'm, I'm telling you, he told me to do it. They tell me, ask me to do it. He said, I want you just to take all the stuff that you've learned and all the, the teachings of the denominations and the different religions and all that. I want you to throw it in the trash and just chuck it. That's what the word he used to me was chuck it. And I knew what that meant, meant going away. So I did. Now he said, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to read my word, meditate in it, study it, and just believe what it says. That's what he said. So that's what I started doing then. And I've been doing it ever since. So that's where I run into problems with people. A lot of people, don't, they say they believe the word of God, but when I share a verse with them, they say, you know how many times this happened to me in the ministry? I say, here's what the word says about this. And he said, yeah, I just asked the person, do you believe the word? I, I believe what the word said. Yeah, I do too. They said, I, I'm, not, I'm like you. I do too. So I say, here's what this word says. But they this is, yeah, this has happened now to me. Yeah, but I really don't mean think it means what it says. I really don't think God meant that. So I say, so you're saying that God is not smart enough to say what he meant to say and mean what he says. So I made my mind if I said, here's what I believe. If God said it, I believe it. I believe God said what he meant to say, and I believe he meant what he said. So if you differ, you differ with God. You don't differ with me or man. When somebody gives you a hard time, tell them what you said, you read from the scriptures, they're not disagreeing with you. Now they'll take it out on you because you're a fleshly person they can get to. But it's God who their problem is with because he's the one who said it. And in this verse he said, now faith is. Faith, God wants us to have a now faith. I know a lot of people with a yesterday, or not yesterday, some yesterday, yeah, but a faith in the future, faith about for the future, believing for the future. I may not have a future face today. God said, now faith is. Now faith. It's a, it's, a, it's a now faith, Kevin. It's a now faith. And if you believe for a now faith, you'll get a now faith. You'll get it now. Yeah. People say you pray for healing. Just wait for God to do it. Jesus never said that. He never was demonstrate the word of God. The four gospels. He prayed. When they come for prayer, he prayed for them. And what happened? He said, go wait six months and you'll get it. He did. They got it when? Now. I want it now, Lord. He said, you're going to get it now. And the Bible said many places he laid his hands on every one of them and they were healed. Instantly healed. Faith is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of, not, of things not seen. The word substance there is a word that says it means support that holds me up. Hope keeps us solid. It's, it's something that is real. That's something that will uh, will keep us uh, uh, solid in our faith. And the word evidence there is proof. It says proof that within us that makes us know 
we have what we cannot see. The word faith there in that verse is a word which has a threefold meaning according to the Greek that I love. I, I also look up words in the Greek dictionary of God to see what they mean. And it said faith is being totally persuaded. Totally persuaded. It is, being, it is being convinced of God's truth. Convinced. It is having absolute assurance, it says. It contains no doubt. Listen, folks. I don't want to get way off here, but I meet so many people that say they have faith, and I can since after I talk to them a while and, and to hear how they talk and what they talk about forever, they don't have it. Now they have it, but they don't have it the way they think they do. Because we don't play games with people. If you don't have the faith and you pray for somebody to be healed, don't tell them that's not the word about going to the doctor. I tell them if, if, if I'm not sure or they're not, I say, go to the doctor. Because I believe that doctors are of God. Now, some people may not, but I do. I believe that God says in His Word, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. Now, the doctors do a lot of good. If we didn't have doctors, we would have a lot less people in this world. You know that, don't you? They'd be dead, y'all. So I thank God for the knowledge He's given doctors. But doctors are not my, my number one priority of who I go to when I'm in need. My number one priority is Jesus. And he, he's the one I depend on and look to. Now back in the 70s, my wife and I and children were eating supper one night at a home, in our home. And we, we were sitting there. She had prepared the, the supper. And that dates me because it's, we used to call it supper back then, not dinner. We call it dinner now. I used to call it lunch, dinner. I lived on a farm. With my family, my grandmother, grandfather, my sister and I, we had outside, outside, play. Come to dinner! It was noon time. Come to dinner. Anybody remember dinner time? And then come to supper! That was dinner. Breakfast, dinner, and supper. Okay, now it's breakfast and whatever else we eat. Whatever it's called. Lunch and then uh, brunch and. Uh, then, uh, then dinner. Dinner is now supper time. But anyway, we were sitting there eating, we're getting ready to eat, and we prayed over a meal. We always prayed over a meal. Had three precious kids God gave us, and my wife and myself. And we had this home that God had blessed us with, but it had a regular formal dining room and a big table. But we didn't want to, she didn't, she didn't want to use that every time we ate. So she said, let's build a breakfast bar. So that's what we done. We built a breakfast bar between the kitchen and the former dining room, and that's where we said Nate. Okay, so uh, this was before Joshua came around. But uh, we were we sat there, bowed our heads, getting ready to pray, and I, and I always, when I pray, I'd always look up with my eyes closed like that. And I was looking up and was getting ready to pray, and all of a sudden there was Jesus looking right at me. And he said, look right at me, Charles. And he said, I'll be your physician. <laughs> now, I didn't know that two weeks later we were going to have a car wreck that was going to pull our car on the way home from church. Jesus said, I'll be your physician. At every sister's Charles, I have tried to depend on that. People say to me, you got these things wrong with your brother Fred. You got that wrong and this wrong. Why don't you go to the doctor? I said, I do. <laughs> I said, I got a physician. One that appeared to me and told me he would be my physician. So what do you want me to do? Discard what he said and go to the doctor? Now, I'm not telling you. Did anybody here say, hear me say, don't go to the doctor? What did I just say? Doctors are good. They're of the Lord. Didn't I say that then? 
So if somebody accuses you, tell people not to go talk to you, you'll know how they lie, okay? Then you need to get saved. It's all liars, so they'll part like fire. So anyway, 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 I tried to depend on the Lord. Now, am I going to say I'll never go to the doctor? No. Because Peter said, I'll never deny the Lord the next day and say, hey, he did live pretty large. He died three times. So I say, I'll never go to the doctor. I'll be in the doctor's office or the hospital before the day's over. This God's going to say, you're not going to Christ, I'm going to work with me. But with God's help, I hope to hold on to the end. And I may not have much longer, but I hope to hold him on to the end and believe him from, as my position. Now, Jesus wants to be our doctor. I may get off. I'll get back on my message here. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of, evidence of things not seen. Faith is being totally persuaded. How much persuaded? Totally. Oh. Faith is being convinced of God's truth. It is having complete assurance. It contains no doubt. Faith is knowing in our hearts that God's word is what? True. Thank you. Who said true? Somebody. Else. You hear? It's knowing in our hearts. You notice I didn't say minds. If the faith was in our minds, every one of us in here today wouldn't have need of nothing because we've all got it up there. We believe God's word is true. We really acknowledge that, don't we? But when it comes to the heart, you know the difference? Between faith in the mind and faith in the heart. Faith in the mind prays and hopes. Faith in the heart prays and knows. No. Don't play games. These people that won't take their children to the doctor because they believe that God's going to take care of them and end up dying. If they believe God's going to take care of them, they will never die. That's just the way it is. Then people need to get their kids to the doctor. Because they're playing games with their faith and with their kids' lives. And it shouldn't happen. And it bothers me. But if you know, you don't need a doctor. If you know. I was going up the highway the other day, a few days ago, and somebody texted me and said, please pray. Said that there's a meeting going on and it's concerning some things in our work and I'm concerned about my job. And, 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 and she's a precious young lady that loves the Lord. She... She's a nuclear medicine person, technician in in, uh, in E-Town, and just a wonderful her and her husband, just love the Lord, their kids, this wonderful Christian family. She said, but I'm concerned. And I, I said, okay, I'll be praying. And I felt immediately for, God said, immediately say, tell her it's going to be okay. But I didn't. I, uh, I said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to pray, make sure I'm hearing from God. I don't know if it was God, but so I, I said, I'm going up the road, and, and I said, Lord, you got to show me. Give me a sign. Show me. Now, now that's another thing. Don't bother coming to me and telling me not to ask for signs. I've been doing my whole ministry. God's answer when I need. When I went into ministry full time, I fleeced him 20 times, 20 times, 20 times before I went into ministry because I learned to know that what I was doing was God's will. And I knew if I knew it, no matter what Satan come at me with, we would stand because I had the assurance that God was in it. So don't come and tell me that I'm going to ask for signs. One of God's greatest servants in the Old Testament asked for signs. Jennifer turned around and asked for the opposite sign next time. So don't tell me not to ask for signs because you're wasting your time. I believe it's all right to do that when it's for one reason. I want to know the will of God, and I am sincere. Going up the road, I said, Lord, you got to show me a sign. I said, do this right now. Let me do, do this. Let me see this. Why is our seeing it wasn't, wasn't like And I didn't, I didn't go no worse, and there it was right in front of me. And I said, okay, Lord, now I want you to confirm what you just did. You know, you know, you know. Again, I said, show me this. And with the road, there it was, there's another one. And I said, Lord, now you've done it twice, but I want you to do it three times. <laughs> because I wanted to tell this girl, and, and sure enough, right down the road was a third sign. In a matter of a minute or two minutes, God had showed me three different signs 
that I asked for. So I said, Lord, is everything going to be all right with her? And he spoke three scriptures to me. And every time he's ever spoke those scriptures, when I pray, it's always happened. And this has been going on for years. Now, sometimes, Charles, I don't get them when I'm praying for people. But, I, but sometimes I do. He spoke these three scriptures to me, and I knew it was done. And I called her, and I said, don't you, I'm going to text her. I said, don't you worry. I was going down the road, but I texted her. I need to get this to her. And I told her, God's just told us going to be okay. It's going to be all right. She said, it has to be, because certain certain things, it's this way. If I lose my job, and I said, I texted her back and said, it's going to be okay. God's going to take her. And as I was doing it, God spoke to me and said, you just used a mustard seed of faith. That was his words. Mustard seed moves mountains. I'm not looking for great faith. I'm just looking for the mustard seed. Because the mustard seed brings about miracles, just as any other amount does. And so I, he said, you just used the mustard seed of faith. So we got to church. I told her, I said, you don't even have to pray. You don't even have to believe. And I said, your husband doesn't have to do either. He already was believed. He already knew, he said. But I said, you don't even have to believe. He said, that's wrong. You should tell me. Why, 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 why should I? Do you think that every person that ever came to Christ had perfect faith to receive? But they still received when they came to him, didn't they? I believe, help thou my unbelief. Is that what one man said? So I said, listen, now, if you don't hear nothing else about faith, listen to this. Everybody, everybody listen. Anybody listening? Boy, okay. I'll speak to you. <laughs> it only takes one person believing. It don't take ten. It doesn't take a thousand. It just takes one. If him prays and believes for something, there's no need for anybody else to believe. He's done exercise all the faith needed to see the miracle come to pass, and it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Man, it's your help when you got a wife like, like his wife agree with you. If two agree together on such a thing, I love the fact you got a, you're together as a couple, you can agree together, and one can put to flight a thousand. And how many two? Ten thousand two can put to flight. Praise God. So if you don't have a prayer partner, you need to find one. If you just call them, well, it's time, my time's up. I need to get my message in. Faith is knowing in our hearts that God's word is true. Listen to this. Faith is being so sure of it that we act upon it knowing we will receive what it says. Faith is being so sure that when we pray, when we pray, we act upon that, what we pray, because we know it's going to happen. If you know that when you pray about healing for yourself and God's going to do it, you know God's going to do it, you have no need to go to the doctor. You need to go when you're not sure. And I've been to the doctors before this thing in the 70s ever happened to me. And uh, but God took care of it. Listen, faith is the belief or knowledge in which no doubt exists. If you're praying and you've got doubt, that's not faith. If you're praying and you're not sure it's happening or you're not positive, that's not faith. You're praying and hoping but you're not praying and believing. That's for all of us. Now, prayer, faith is the belief or knowledge in which no doubt exists. It's knowing something is true to the place that we have perfect peace. God's peace. Have you ever prayed? Oh, and you, when you got done, it was gone. You ever had to heaven? Did you have peace? You do, don't you? When you pray and you have faith and believe, you have that peace, that settles it. You have no need to ask anymore. Here's what we need to do. Have I'm not saying don't. Not any players now. You, 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 I've had my name clear. I said, clear on that. 
If you've got doubt, don't be playing games. But if you know that when you pray, it's done. Here's what we need to be doing afterwards. We need to keep giving him thanks and praise. <laughs> we spend too much time asking, not enough time praying. Yeah. That's why I think it's going like today, service of worship and praise, I could stay in there for hours. I love the presence of God. I never get tired of it. I love being in God's presence. And when we when we pray and we know it's done, you know what I do? I say, thank you, Lord, for doing that. Thank you, God. Now that precious couple is still going through things, but I'm just I'm thanking God because God's told me it's done. God told me this morning, I was thinking about you. You let me know it's done. It's done. God's going to take care of it. I said, you know what happened? It may turn out to be better than it was before this happened. I believe that, don't you? I know some of you do. Faith is being so sure of something that when we pray and after we pray, we have no fear or worry. Faith is being so sure of something that we have no fear or worry. If you have fear after you get done, you didn't pray in faith. If you have worry after you get done, you didn't pray in faith. Faith is believing that when we pray, we will receive. We believe it. We know it. We know we'll re we will receive. Faith is knowing because of our because is knowing because of our faith that we will receive what we are in need of. Faith is the substance of what we hope for, the proof of what we've not seen. Now, faith is what you have need of. When you have faith, you have what you have need of. And this is what he's saying, the substance. Uh, what I need an eyeglass case. What is that? It's an eyeglass case. When I pray and I don't have one and I pray, Lord, I need an eyeglass case and I'm trusting you to give me one. That's just as if I've got it. I possessed it right the moment I believe. It hasn't been manifested yet, but I, I possess it right that moment. And I know from then on I've got an eyeglass case coming. That's the substance. The substance is what you pray for, what you need to have need of. It's what it is. It's the proof. This is proof of an eyeglass, isn't it? Case. Okay. It's proof of what we have not seen. Faith says I have it before I see it. Faith is the proof of what we need. It's the answer to our prayers. Faith is the answer to our prayers. It's what makes us whole. When you have faith, you are whole. You just have to believe for its manifestation. Listen, listen, here's what, listen to what. Listen to, I'm gonna read this to you from Matthew, the 19th chapter. I've been going over, so I'm just gonna go over another hour, but I'm about done, because I've been lost in 20 big times, man. It looks like y'all last a little longer than that, though. Y'all seem like you've listened. You know what I do? I said this before, and we'll say it again so you might have facility. When I go to a church service and I'm in there listening to a minister pray, preach, I don't think he's going to preach 20 minutes or an hour or longer. I remember I preached here an hour, hour and a half one time. And they changed the time back to 10 o'clock, so an hour was over. You know. No, they didn't do it for me, so I just teased it. <laughs> I just teased it. Brother Donald, you're listening for you. Praise God. Faith is what makes you whole. You have what it takes, what you need to be made whole. Listen to this. Here's the scripture proof on this. Matthew, the 19th chapter. And the ninth chapter. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Chapter 9. Verse 21. Verse 21. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him, Jesus, and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, listen to our confession. If I be made, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. 
And Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Faith has to be in something or someone. Faith in anything that's a something will never get you for sure what you need. Material things, no matter what kind of faith you put in material things, will not get you, get you uh, what you need. Faith in other people that Jesus will not be sure to get you what you need. There's one person you have to have faith in that you're guaranteed an answer if you have faith and believe. It's worth That's Jesus Christ. She had faith in Christ. She said, if I can just get to him, if I can just get to him, and I could just touch his garment, I will be made whole. Now she had a money. She was taking her life. She spent all the money she ever had on God. Another gospel tells us that. She had run out of hope. But she heard about Jesus. Who was healing all the pain. And she said, if I could just touch his clothes. So she came in behind him. And he was walking. She just looked up and Oh, whoa! I made it a virtue of God. He's a virtue of God. He's a virtue And he over his And Jesus said in another gospel, somebody touched him. And the disciple says, what do you mean? The Lord just be lower and all right. Yeah, somebody touched him and said, there you go. Yeah. And that healing virtue flew out of him, flew that garment right into her and his country. But with him, she was made whole. Uh, and he said, Faith makes us whole. Faith knows. She changed this conviction. I know if I can just touch the heel of this garment, that I'll be made whole. Faith is the answer to our prayers. If any of his writing scriptures down, faith is the answer to our prayers. Matthew 21, 22 says that. Matthew 21, 22. Mark eleven twenty four. I feel like about the precious folks over at the little church. They pray Catholics, and they're always writing down. And they stop me. They get irritated with me because I go too fast. And they keep writing all down. One well, girl, please say, Now, what was that again? I've been gone fast a couple times. What was that again? I've been okay here. I love it, though. James 5, chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 talks about faith is the answer to our prayer. I had... Uh, Give me three minutes. I'll, I'll go through this very, very fast. So if you're writing, you won't be able to say it. Okay. The more we read and meditate, where does faith come from? From what? By hearing, hearing by the word of God. So faith comes from where? The word of God. From where? Hearing the word of God. The what? The word of God. Anybody miss that? Do you believe that? <coughs> Romans, thank you, brother. Romans, he's exactly. Say that again. You go ahead. You got yourself out of Romans 10:17. If you're writing it down. <laughs> Praise God. Romans 10:17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. If I could ask you a question today about what would you like to have in your Christian life, some of the things people would say was more faith. And it just really hurts me. You know why? Because God told us how to get it. We say we want it, but we're not willing to put forth any effort to get it. Well, I just I just stepped too far and I stepped out of the mess here and I need to get back. We say we want faith, but God said God tells us how to get it, but we won't do it. We won't do it. And it's one of the most important things in your life as a Christian is faith. It's by faith, the Bible says, that we're able to overcome. 
It's by faith that we're saved. For oh, by grace are you saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now I'm going to tell you something. It's going to make you mad. The lady gets so mad at me one time I said this in the Bible study. She got up and screamed out and wouldn't come back. I said, she, well, she said, faith the grace saves you. I said, grace doesn't save anybody. It never has, never will. Grace does not save anybody. If grace could save a person, Jesus would never have to come. Because the Bible said in the Old Testament, many times God was a God of grace. It's a God of grace. He could have just shown us grace and we've been saved. Grace doesn't save you. Never has, never will. Grace is what allows you to come to the Lord. It's unmerited favor that allows you and me to come to God and say, Lord, I need you. I need to be saved. I need to be born again. It's grace that allows me to come to God to put my faith in Christ so I can be saved. Amen. Without grace, you can't be saved, but grace doesn't save you. Faith in Jesus Christ saves you. Amen. And I'm going to say you something else. Don't get mad at me about it. The cross don't save you. I know I'm a, a group today that's teaching the cross. It's the most important thing of Christianity. It's not the most important thing to me. The most important thing to me is the one that died on the cross. Yeah. It's Jesus Christ who saves us. It's us who has to come to the cross where Jesus died and be willing to admit we're sinners and we're lost without him. We need to be saved. But that cross doesn't save you. If the cross saved us, we wouldn't have had Jesus die. Just put a cross up and God said, come to the cross. They just see where we get. If you stay with the word, you can't go wrong. Come on, brother. Get out of the word, you're going to go wrong. And Jesus Christ is the one who saves when we come to him. For by grace are you saved through faith. And faith in Christ, that's what he's talking about. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, as in which you boast. Okay. Why do we need faith? Without it, we can't please God. The Bible says, Hebrews 13, 11, 16, 11, 6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without it, we can't please God. Faith keeps us from falling in our spiritual lives. Luke 18, 1 says, Men ought to always pray and not faint. That means to grow weary, become weak, and fall, fail in our hearts. Faith gives us courage. 1 Samuel 17. David went out and fought the life. What did he say? He said to Saul, he said, Saul, I fought a bear, I fought a lion. With my bare hands, I killed both of them. When they come in, took a sheep out of my flock. And I'm going out and doing the same thing as some circumcised said Philistine, who's defied the armies of the living God. Come on. Said it's God who will deliver him in my hands. What was that speaking? What was that stupidity? Cockiness? They say he's a cocky little fellow. He said, I'm going to go out there and slay this uncircumcised Philistine, and I'm going to cut his head off. And this giant was nine and a half foot tall. The armor, his chest protector, Weighed 200 pounds. The spear, point of his spear, weighed 20 pounds. Two, nine and a half feet tall. And here comes a little five foot six or seven. And, and he was so angry, Goliath was. He said, What have you done to send this lazy little thing out here to fight me? Yeah. Yeah. What do you say? And then uh, David said, Goliath, give me your kids and stop talking to them. I'm going to take your kids away. <laughs> now, I would have liked to see that. I would have God took me back in the dream and let me see that whole thing happen. But they might see something they've never seen before. They might see me run all over the hills of glory because I already knew what they was going to do. Where'd that guy come from? He don't even look like us. He's fat and old, but he's running. <laughs> I just say, Saul, God, let me come back in the dream. By the way, you better, get, you better stay right with God. You're in trouble, buddy, coming in the future. <laughs> he went out there and fought. What was it that gave David courage? 
was faith. He knew that God would deliver the life into his hands. He knew it, and he did. Faith gives us courage. <laughs> faith enables us to be saved. I already told you that. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Praise God. And faith gives us victory over all we face in the world. That's 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. 1 John, not John. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. When we have faith in God's word, it must come to pass exactly the way God said it would. I'll end with this. Smith Wigglesworth was a man who was used of God mightily in the ministry. Back in the early 1900s, and I don't think it's late 1800s, but early 1900s, greatly used of God. And uh, he had raised the dead 11 times. He had seen many, many people in his ministry healed. Many people. He had a peculiar way of doing things. And, uh, did you read about it? It was unusual. I, I couldn't say that. If I get healed, I can't say anything about it. But I said, well, Jesus did do it. But I said, everybody got healed. He, the people would come to be healed, and he'd hit them in the stomach. Well, or he did them wherever they were hurting, real hard. And instantly they got healed. Amen. He had 11 people he raised from the dead and he healed his wife back. Amen. And he raised her. He raised her from the dead. And when he did, she said, Smith, that was his. Smith's little boy. She called him Smith. Smith. You have to let me go. Because God says it's my time. I mean, it's an important time when the man wants to die there. Every, every man says, it's important when every man wants to die at the judgment. We all have a form of a death. And sometimes it's going to be God's time. And so he prayed for her and raised her from the dead. And she said, now Smith, I know you don't want me to leave. But I've got to tell you. God says it's time for you to come home. And he said, I don't want you to go. And she said, I know you don't want me to leave, but I have to. It's my time. And he said, but I love you. And she said, I know you do. But it's God's time. And she said, and God can't override your faith because he promised in his word that if you believe it exactly the way that you believe, it would happen. He can't override his word. He can't override your faith. You have to release me. Let me go. And he did. And she died. Went to be with the Lord. Didn't die. Faith. God. God, when he gave a promise to him, he means it. And his word, he means it. When you pray about something, you believe it has to happen. Or God has lied to you. It has to happen. Impossible life. It has to happen. Our faith is so powerful that the Bible says the faith in Jesus Christ and his word is so powerful that it helps us to overcome all the trials and troubles that we that we uh, face in life. Listen, Mark 9, 23 says, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that doubts. Huh? That's the old man had four people have to listen. He's doing these things. I don't mean to be rough. You know, I say about when I go to service and I hear a message. God, I feel like God wants me to go to service for a reason. Just go hear the message. Here's what I do, brother. I don't care how long he preaches. I sit there in that pew. And I make myself listen. I don't let other things come in. When Christ do, I rebuke and get rid of it. Because I said, you've got me here for a reason. I don't want to miss what's said might be for me. So I make myself listen, Jane, for 20 minutes or an hour, however long he's preaching. I make myself. I make myself sit there. What's up? What's up? I just, I'm not afraid to do good. When somebody's preaching, I make myself listen. I'm focusing in on what they're saying. I make myself do that. You can do the same. Making yourself listen to the word of God is more important than making you think, self, uh, think about this snake that's waiting for you to rest. 
If thou canst believe all things, and believe me, folks, I've had those thoughts come in. If thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe it. God just wants us to believe his word.